In today's news, the scientist who discovered human-centric lighting shares tips with Lux. Lighting-based indoor positioning is set to revolutionize U.S. stores. And health fears make a city think twice about LED. Lux Today starts right now. The man behind the human-centric revolution has told Lux today the lighting industry needs to be much more dynamic. Professor Russell Foster is credited with discovering light-sensitive cells in the retina of the eye, which influence the body's internal clock. Robert Leeming, Lux Review's online editor, caught up with him at Lux Live 2016. So, but this science, how, how can the light, lighting industry take your discovery yeah. and, and apply it? Well, I think it, what, what the lighting industry has to do is define what humans are doing in that particular space at a particular time. So if you want to set the clock robustly, then you need bright morning light. Now, most of us, of course, live in homes which are not well lit. We're commuting to work, let's say, on the tube, so that will be poorly lit. We get to work, and it's usually a poorly lit environment as well. What we should perhaps do is have dynamic lighting, whereby first thing in the morning when you get to work, you actually have bright blue enriched light, which would intersect and stimulate those new photoreceptors maximally. Um, then perhaps later in the day, you can sort of wind it down. These receptors also are not just clock receptors. They're also doing other things as well, not least alertness. Yeah. So as you increase the amount of light, you increase levels of alertness. And so um, and it's by this new receptor system. So again, if you want um, spaces where people need to be particularly alert, then again, you could install blue enriched lighting for that purpose. So I see a number of different sorts of applications depending upon what individuals are expected to do. The research can also be used to improve rest at night, especially in hospital wards, which are often lit continuously. I, I mean, I think one particularly important area is, is very much within the hospital and the intensive care. If you go into intensive care, it's basically very little strong light dark cycle. It's basically constant light. That doesn't allow the clock to lock onto a, onto a signal. The clock will start to drift. Physiology will start to fall apart in these individuals who are particularly vulnerable. Yeah. So another great application would be very much within, within the hospital environment. Yeah. Professor Foster went on to advise the industry to adopt a much more nuanced attitude toward human-centric lighting. Just to, just to finish off, do you think there's anything more that the lighting industry uh, can do to take advantage of this research? Yeah, I think it would be good. It's, 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 going to, it's more complicated than blue light good, you know, red light bad or, what, or whatever. I think it, 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 it is a sort of a dynamic lighting system. We do now know that the rods and cones can tr contribute, they can modulate these photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. So we do need a bit more research. And I don't think we should just rush in and say, right, we're going to put blue lights all over the place. We need to think of what's going to be undertaken in that particular space um, and what's the uh, most appropriate lighting for those different tasks. So I think a little bit reflection before just rushing in wholesale. While new lighting technology can be used to revolutionize health and well-being, it can also be used to help with everyday chores. Acuity Brands claims it has now deployed lighting-based indoor positioning systems, or IPS, in swaths of retail spaces across the U.S. Lux Review revealed that Target was using IPS technology on a trial basis two years ago, and it's now thought that Walmart is also preparing to roll out the technology. Acuity's IPS system communicates with smartphones via visible light communication or Bluetooth chips embedded in luminaires. The lights are then able to welcome a shopper to a store and direct them to discounts of interest. Not everyone is convinced about new lighting technology. The City of Montreal has canceled a plan to install thousands of high-intensity LED streetlights. The decision to use 3,000 Kelvin fixtures instead of the planned 4,000 Kelvin was prompted by fears that blue LED light might cause health problems. Cities such as Toronto and Chicago have already chosen to reduce the strength of LED streetlights, and it's expected that other North American cities will soon follow. 
Montreal had faced concerted opposition over the strength of the planned LED fixtures ever since the multi-million dollar plan was announced last year. That wraps things up. Remember, you can get all the latest lighting news globally, 24 hours a day at LuxReview.com. I'm Courtney Ferguson with Lux Today. We'll see you back here at the same time next week.